heart patients, if they have had a heart attack, and for other reasons, if they have a poor heart function, there can be a risk to develop heart arrhythmia problems. And some of these heart arrhythmia problems can be dangerous and may even be life-threatening. So if their heart function is weak enough, and we, are, we think that they are at risk for these heart arrhythmias, we'll implant a, a defibrillator in them to help protect against sudden cardiac death. Henry Hall, a heart disease patient, received an implantable defibrillator at the University of Rochester Medical Center. In 1995, I had my first heart attack. I had uh, triple bypass surgery, but I had heart damage to the level of 30%, and he recommended the defibrillator. I've had it in here almost two years and no problems with it. What it does is that it actually will monitor that patient's heart rhythm constantly from beat to beat, so that if the heart rhythm does go wrong, that device would detect it, and it will actually treat it if the heart rhythm doesn't stop by itself. And it can treat it by pacing the heart a little faster, or it can actually give the heart a shock, rescuing the patient from those dangerous heart rhythm problems. I'm very happy to have the defibrillator knowing that uh, uh, the risk of uh, complete heart failure uh, exists with the level that I have right now. The only changes in, in my life are affected directly by the reduction in the heart functionality. Uh, things I used to do without any effort at all, now I have to put a limit to it. Tennis, stacking firewood, bringing it up to the house and stuff, I can do all that still. Dr. Arthur Moss, a professor of cardiology at the University of Rochester Medical Center, is a world-renowned expert in the treatment and prevention of cardiac arrhythmias and sudden cardiac death. He says that defibrillators do have some side effects, including unnecessary or inappropriate shocks, which are delivered for rhythms that aren't dangerous or life-threatening. The adverse side effects from the defibrillator, even though it saves lives, it can produce troublesome recurrent shocks or recurrent rhythm disorders that uh, frighten the patient. They're, it's painful, it's uncomfortable. Um, they have to go to the doctor to find out whether it was a, a real cause or whether it was an inappropriate affair. And sometimes that's even difficult to determine. According to a 2008 study in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology, approximately 20 to 25 percent of defibrillator therapy is inappropriate. Dr. Moss, along with Dr. Wong and others at the Medical Center, led the MADIT RIT trial to see if they could reduce inappropriate shocks from the implantable defibrillator. They found that a simple change in the way physicians set or programmed the device made all the difference. The findings of reduction in mortality and uh, inappropriate therapy were quite striking. So we saw really close to a 90% reduction in inappropriate first therapies. So this is quite dramatic, and we saw a 55% reduction in mortality, and we saw no increase in syncope or passing out. Now with very simple programming of the device, that is much safer and with fewer side effects, very, almost no side effects, that we think that this will be more widely used in what we consider high risk and what's been considered in the medical literature high risk patients. There are roughly 200,000 defibrillators implanted every year in the United States. This is a, quite a sizable number. If one can reduce the, the adverse effects, the side effects of this, um, this is a significant advance, and that was the aim of the study.